It was January 1st, 2022. I was sitting on the floor of my parents' basement, and this was probably me at my lowest. On the outside, things were going okay. The ministry was taking off in some ways, especially on TikTok at that point. But in my personal life, I felt alone. I felt really alone. And I felt like God had honestly screwed me over. Why did I feel that way? Why did I feel like, man, prayer isn't working for me? God isn't working for me? Here's part of the reason that I felt that way. For a long time, I thought that my prayers and and what I was asking of God um, were justified. Why? Well, because not only were they good things that I was asking for, but that I showed up. I, God, I did what I was supposed to do. I did my part. I was the good Christian kid. And now it's your job to deliver me what I need, what I want. And these are good things. So what's the problem? This, this led me to the point of just complete burnout and exhaustion because God wasn't giving me everything that I wanted. I was sitting on that floor so discouraged, so bitter, so angry and anxious because God had left me. God, what? you could do everything that I want you to do. Why don't you do that? I've been good on my part. Why can't you deliver on yours? Now, I hope you're beginning to see that this is a toxic relationship. It is. It really is. But I want to be honest about what I was experiencing in that moment in hopes that it will help you in your faith and also in your prayer life. Because the truth is, prayer didn't solve my problems. Now, that might come as a, as a shock to you, maybe. You, you, you say, well, uh, Isaac, isn't that what it's supposed to do? Isn't prayer supposed to solve our problems? Let's dive into that. Let's really see if that's the truth. Along our spiritual journey, we find out that sometimes prayer works and sometimes it feels like it doesn't. Okay, my mom got cancer, stage four, breast cancer, a few years ago. Or I guess it was five years ago now. And that was the scariest thing ever. I prayed to God, God, why, why would you do this to us? Why would you try to take my mom away from me? How could you do this? And I would pray, God, please heal her, please heal her, please heal her. And he did. But then over the last year, we found out that the cancer, um, it either came back or um, more cancer came, came about in her body. And so now we're kind of back in the same position. And I'm thinking, wow, God, uh, you answered my prayer or you seem to, but, but, but what, what's going on now? Why did the cancer come back? Here's the hard reality, is that if God wanted to, he could solve all of our problems today. He could answer every single one of our prayers exactly the way that we want him to. He could do that, as long as they're in accordance with his, his character, right? If they're good things, they're pure things, they're right things. He could solve all of our problems. But he doesn't do that. Here's the problem, is that I often see... I, I pretty much always see my pain, the pain that I'm experiencing, emotional, physical, trials that are coming up in my life or the life of people that I care about as God's absence. God is not present here. If something, something is, is painful and it is a trial or there's some, some, something bad, God must be gone. God must be absent from this experience. God must be absent from my life. And I know what you're thinking. Isaac, uh, God's not absent from your life. Like it just, it just feels that way sometimes. And I'm saying, okay, well, I'm going to take your word for it. Let's go to the Bible. Let's see what the Bible says. Okay. This is in Romans 8.28. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. This verse for so long was used by preachers, teachers, evangelists to tell you, hey, you know what? Things might be looking bad now, but you know, if you are following God, if you're doing the right thing, then look, things are going to work out for you. And they usually tell some testimony or some story about how they were bankrupt and their house was foreclosed on and their car was being taken away and their ministry was being shut up. But 10 years later, look at their family. They, they're the uh, you know, pastor of the church. They have a big mansion. They have a nice car. God came through. 
all things work together for those who love God, who are called according to his purposes. But I'm forced to think, what does it mean by good? What does this verse mean that all things work together for good? Whose definition of, of good is that? Now, if it's my definition, then I'm right with that pastor. Yep, okay, you know, my life's going to be great. My, my, you know, I'm going to get the mansion. I'm going to get the car. I'm going to get the, the, the success, the popularity, the recognition, the achievement, all the power, the control of my life. Yes, all things work together for, together for good because that is what I consider to be good. But then we need to think about who wrote the Bible. <laughs> and through the words of Paul, God was writing, all things work together for good according to his definition. Now, what is good in God's eyes? What is good in his eyes? Now we think, man, pain, th- this is just like, th- God can't be, can't be near this, right? But what we, what we learn in the scriptures is actually that God uses pain, trials, just all sorts of things that we consider to be just ruining our story, ruining the way that we want our life to go. He uses them for our growth, for our perseverance, to grow us in love and sanctification. That means we're growing closer towards Jesus to be more like him. He connects it to someone on a potter's wheel, molding and shaping this clay. Yes, for the clay, this is a really um, negative experience, right? If you are being molded and you're being shaped, um, that's going to be a painful experience. Absolutely. But on the other side, God's making something beautiful, a masterpiece, something, something that he considers to be very good. The clay might be, hey, uh, this isn't good to me. This doesn't feel good to me. I don't want to be that. Don't shame me into that. That's not what I want to be. I'm happy just being the clump of clay that I am. But that's not God's way. So he uses this pain and these trials and suffering in our life to grow us closer to him. So now we learn, we're seeing here that, okay, pain isn't a testimony of God's absence, but rather an admission of his presence with us. That when there is pain, when there is shaping, when there is trial, that's when God says, hey, son, all these coping mechanisms that you've been using, all this work that you've tried to put in to control your life, to make it go in a particular way, I want you to let go of those things and realize that this whole thing is about me and I ha- I'm sovereign and I'm in control and I want you to submit yourself to me. Here's the deal. Um, when Jesus was in the boat with the disciples, okay, and remember this story, he was sleeping and the storm was raging and the disciples were scared and they were like, oh, boy, we're going to drown, we're going to drown. And, uh, and kind of, you know, Jesus wakes up one of, and he's like, okay, stop storm. The storm stops and the disciples are like, okay, thank goodness, right? And the, the storm stopped and, and they're at peace, right? Um, then there's another story, a Jesus walking on the water. Actually, the disciples think that it's a ghost. They don't know what's on the water, but then they can, they kind of make it out and they see, oh, that's, that's Jesus. And, and Peter says, you know, if it's really you, Lord, call, call me out onto the water. And this is a crazy thing. This is a scary thing. And, and Peter gets out on, off of the boat and into the water and he's walking on the water. But the second he takes his eyes off Jesus, you probably heard the story before, he begins to sink. He begins to sink. Here's the deal. For most of us, we like the first story because we need Jesus to do something. Calm the storm, Jesus. There's a storm going on. It's scary. It's causing me discomfort. It's causing me fear. Stop the storm. And Jesus does. The second time, what happens? Well, Jesus calls us out onto the water. He calls us to walk with him in the storm. Jesus, I don't want to, I don't want to walk on the water there. Peter's courageous. I don't want to walk on the water. That's scary. So just stop the storm. Just reveal yourself. No, walk, walk with me. Walk with me in the storm. Keep your eyes on me. And that's what prayer is, friends. Prayer is not about getting the answer or getting the solution or getting exactly what you want in the moment. It's about walking with Jesus. It's about talking with him. It's about 
sharing with him all the, the depths of your pain and your tri- the trials that you're experiencing and giving that to God and saying, God, uh, you know what? If you're going to continue to bring me through this, it's going to be hard, but I'm going to cling to you. What I had to realize is that I saw God as a distant father, as somebody that was disconnected from me that, yeah, he loved me from afar, but I wanted him to send me gifts and send presents in replacement of his presence, right? Uh, maybe you you have relatives like that. They don't really live close to you. Maybe they, they live far away, but, you know, they, they make up with it with, uh, you know, sending you different things from time to time. And, and that's kind of like to remind you of them. Like, oh, yeah, they live in that part. We don't see them very often. But, like, God is not that kind of father. He's not the kind of father that's off in the distance, that's in a foreign, uh, distant land, that's sending you things every once in a while when you ask him, send him letters of, hey, I, I need this, Dad. Can you send me this? You're not in boarding school. Okay, Jesus is here with you. God is here with you. He is present. Okay, and he's not willing for you to get so distracted by the stuff that he gives you that you forget about him. So he will refocus you and he will take away those things if necessary to remind you that he is the present, that he is the gift, that his presence is primary. Okay, we need to remember that. Every time you think about God and you start listing things, God, I need this. God, I need this. God, I need this. And you're you're just kind of, okay, I hope I get all this stuff. Remember that he already knows what you need because he lives with you. He's with you already. Doesn't mean you can't share what you need. That's awesome. That's great. It's good to be vulnerable in that way. But just know he's not some distant guy that's far away that needs to be informed of what you need. He's with you because he lives with you. To close the loop on the story, as I sat in that basement, I was having this anxiety attack. I was questioning what my life was even going to turn out to because I had a lot of fear about what I was going to become and who I was and what significance and security I had in this world. Um, God helped to use that moment to teach me a lesson. It was that as much as I wanted to cling to control, that prayer was my gateway into letting go. Prayer was my gateway into surrendering to him, to be quiet, to say, God, you know what? I actually don't know what to do. (laughs) And I don't know what I'm going to be, but I know I want to be close to you. And so I give you this time, even though it's already yours, to to just cry out to you. Say, God, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling and I need you. And that's where it begins, friends. It begins with that authenticity. It becomes with that. It begins with that vulnerability. And maybe you didn't have a father like that that you could have that conversation with to say, "Dad, I'm struggling." Dad, I'm really struggling. But God is that father for you. God is that father for you, and He is so loving and He is so compassionate. And though He doesn't always give you what you want, man, His ways are best, and all things will will work out for good. For you who love God and are called according to his purpose, but you need to be open to what that good looks like. And it might take a while to see, but your father can be trusted. He is so good. I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope these videos on prayer have been a blessing to you. And if they have, um, I just encourage you to subscribe if you haven't already and like this video because I'm putting out new videos all the time. A huge shout out to everyone on Patreon. Um, Guys, this ministry is really only supported by AdSense and the people that decide to support me on a monthly basis. And so this is what I do for my job. This is how I support my family. And it's a huge blessing if you're able to support me in the link in my description. Thank you so much. Until next time, God bless.